Galatians 2. Hallelujah. It's my worship, brother. It's the, I want it right now, but I, I may have to go up for an hour, so I, I'm going to go on getting the word, but trust me. Y'all did. I didn't get it in. I didn't get it in. Amen. Galatians 2 or 20. This, um, and there's a lot to say, but I want to deal with Christ foundation stuff today. I think we're getting too much knowledge. Not enough growth, but a lot of knowledge. And it seems like most of the knowledge is causing folks to forsake foundations, boundaries that were set Christendom. Um, before I get to give you this word, I'm going to give you <laughs> well, let me stay with this. I, I was studying something else. And boy, this was what I was studying. This was really deep. It's on my mind, but this right here is what we need today, amen? Say grow. Amen. What I've seen in the church world is that praise is definite, but growth is not necessary. That means as long as you praise, you're okay, but you don't have to grow. Growth is the problem that we're having is that we have folks who are in the house of God and now they're not even in the house of God. They're just online saying the Lord is calling them to just teach the word on the internet. God called me out of them churches. These are some of the most flaky word people because God is not calling you away from his bride. He established the church. Well, here's the argument. Well, the church is not necessarily the four walls. It is. It is. It's the institution that was established. The Bible says in the book of Acts, they went house to house. That was the church at the time. They gathered in a place where they had a congregation. The internet is not a congregation. Having a chat, conference chat, prayer, it's not, no. Human people, they may interact with them. It's a fellowship. I say all the time, you need church for fellowship. So Satan don't make you weird and isolated. You need fellowship. Man, Satan is a master of isolation. And isolation is when he speaks. A lot of the heretical doctrines we have come from a man in isolation somewhere, thanking the Lord called him away from people. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. God don't call you away. Amen. You might need to just get around some better people, but don't think he's calling you to be by yourself. Or you the only one left. You, you under the Elijah delusion. Not everybody has bowed their knee to Baal and show having kissed him. Some of us are still pressing through the gumbo that is now in truth and knowledge of, of spirituality. We got to go through a lot now to, to, to find Christ. It used to be easy. I understand the broad road. I thought the broad road was going to be a road without spirituality. No, the broad road paved with Hinduism and Hotepism and Hebrewism and Allah and all kind of stuff. But narrow is the way. Amen. Give my son one hand. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. So what I'm going to talk about today is called the nevertheless life. Nevertheless life. I, I'm shocked at the depth of research that I see and the lack of fruit of the spirit. Deep in research, but no fruit. Wise, but hateful. Smart, but can't stand nobody. This is what Satan's trick in the beginning was. To gain all knowledge and yet never developed the character of the Most High. This is the reason why the Most High cursed Adam and Eve because it was his nature and character 
they were supposed to seek and want to be like. But after they ate of the, of, of, of the, of the fruit of the tree, their, their, their life would be spent getting knowledge. Not knowledge of God, but just knowledge. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we have a, a, a generation that knows more Bible, that have more books to study, that know more websites to go glean from, and yet have less developed fruit. Talk to me. Amen. We have a generation that can break down marriage backwards and forwards, but can't stay married. Amen. They deep, bruh, with no fruit. No long suffers, no paces, no tempers, no meekness. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And this is exactly what Satan promised Eve. You're going to know good and evil, but you're not going to have any power to do God. You're only going to be able to do man's good and man's evil, but you won't be able to do God's will. Amen. So you trade God's will for knowledge. Come on, talk to me. Amen. This is one of our greatest problems because you have to wrestle with them now, bro. You try to talk to them, you got to wrestle that piece of knowledge they got in order to give them the will of God. Now, say grow up. up. This is about growth. Say growth. growth. When you came to Christ, it was an invitation to grow, meaning that you do not stay on the same level. You go from faith to faith, glory to glory, you keep growing up and keep growing up. How long? Till you, you keep growing till he comes. The Bible says when he comes, we shall be like him. But we shall see him as he is. But what am I doing now? I'm doing my best to be like him as I see him. Now, the little bit of light I got about him now, I'm striving to be like what I see now. So I'm not going to be perfect because I don't see perfectly. But once I see him face to face, I'm going to see how his robe looking, how he's standing, how he moves. Then I'm going to be more like him. But the little light I got out of this word is what I'm striving to be now. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So say the purpose was growth. It was to grow up, to become a disciple, a disciplined one. That would use the disciplines of the kingdom to develop maturity. Whereby the most high could trust us with his other side stuff. Ah, it's a whole nother teaching. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He has a lot on the other side, bro. That place that Christ was trying to get them to realize called the kingdom of heaven. He has stuff over there that he's trying to transfer or give us, give us license to operate in this world now with what he got there. But it costs maturity to handle the weight now, what he got over it, what he got over is glory, but glory is weight. So in order to handle what he got over there, he has to condition us here. What, what do you mean condition us? If he gives us something from over there and we over here and he don't discipline us for it, we'll become gods. Which is Satan's promise to the woman that you shall be as God's thinking that now Satan has given us knowledge from over there too. And that's why men are thinking they're God because they, they can levitate. A, they got a little hidden occultic knowledge and they're becoming God. Now you go, you can be God, you can be as God's two different ways. You can be as God's by being the, a son of God or be a little G. Or you can be filled with knowledge or technology and be, y'all don't notice what Satan is really giving is technology. All secret societies, see I'm getting into a, to another message. Are you there? It's the knowledge of the other side without the Holy Ghost that make you think you're God. Are y'all there? Now, I'll give you a little bit. Lord, I don't need to go find you all this. I'll give you some. The world is becoming what was the Mayan what was that place down there? 
the place where the Mayans was. No, the Aztecs was the other people before the Mayans, I believe. I'm talking about the place. The place was called um, the place where they were sacrificing people. Uh, you know, those, oh, okay. I can't remember now. But the world is becoming that place. The world is becoming Egypt. The world is becoming Babylon. The world is becoming Greece. The world is becoming Rome. What is these cultures, what did they have in common? They were all given technology from the other side. And the cost of the technology was feeding fallen angels with the blood of men. That's why all those cultures had to sacrifice. And if you don't think Rome was sacrificing under the catacombs of the Vatican Church, which was not always the Vatican Church, up under the earth where they would sacrifice to the demons or the fallen angels that gave Europeans the knowledge that the Egyptians and the, and the Mayans had, now the, now the Europeans have that knowledge. And at the height of the culture, is this too much? No. How can I get back to what I'm saying? I want to I want to give you a little bit of that because all the work now in order for the world to become that now they have to create the climate. Say the climate. Now the climate that calls fallen angels to 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 flourish is darkness or sin or it's transgressing the laws of the most high. The goal is I don't know if y'all remember this. I don't know if you've seen it, but I remember watching a movie. Uh, it was called uh, The Avengers. I think it was The Avengers. And uh, they took this sword thing, and this sword thing had some type of power in it, and they told uh, Thor, y'all know Thor, was telling Iron Man, <laughs> he was saying, if you operate with this little sword, it's going to summon the other worlds to know that America, that that this that uh, the, uh, the, the, this world has reached a certain level of knowledge and ready for a certain level of war. Are y'all there? So basically, now I know that's a movie, but there's a lot of truth behind that stuff. They're not getting that stuff out of their mind. But anyway, so that I don't go too deep into that. The chaos is needed in order to develop or to or to uh, summon these fallen angels that will eventually begin to ins do the same thing they done in Egypt, they done in the Mayans, they done in Greece, they done in Babylon. They're going to do the same thing, which is trade men knowledge, which our governments of the world are in cahoots with them. That's how we got. In 40 years, we went from analog to digital. Yes. But before that, we were stupid as all that door. See, they make you think we're evolving, but we're really devolving. Yes. All that it, all that technology was there. That's why the Mayans had hieroglyphs with guys in space suits. Each of them had hieroglyphs with helicopters and, and spaceships. Why? Because they try to make you think we're devolving because the last lie that Satan is telling is that uh, these beings will show up and they will be the ones that created us. Is this too much? But the point I'm making is sin, say sin. Sin, sin releases power. Come on, say sin, sin. releases power. power. So every time you sin, power is released. The power is darkness. Disobedience to the Most High releases a power called darkness. Come on, talk to me. If I go technical, I'll call it dark matter. It's released because what Satan always knew that he has, in order for him to rule, he has to make the culture um, um, he has to make the culture of God's creation become repulsive. To the not just to the most high, but also to the angels that have to work on behalf of men. Is this uh, so he's so the goal 
is to cause man the same way Balaam told uh, ba ba Balaam told Balak, I can't curse them, but if but they can curse themselves. They must fall from grace or their cup of iniquity must be filled and then the Most High will remove his hedge and that's when the culture uh, goes through the paradigm shift, meaning now what was wrong, what was right becomes wrong. Look how close we are to being there. That's why the Bible says in the last days, they're going to call wrong right. Right now, they... They called Bruce Jenner a woman and said Serena Williams was a man. <laughs> How you do that? Give them. Yeah, yeah. Now, what I'm trying to show you is the increase of iniquity is what Satan is using to to establish this world as his kingdom. Now, he had another world. I don't, oh. See, I'm full of this other message, but I'm not going to do it to y'all today. I'm going to give y'all this cross because I don't have time. This is the reason why l learning a life of denial, learning how to deny the flesh, how to overcome the flesh so you don't allow the transgression to cause you to release darkness. Why are witchcraft covens and places that are evil, why are they so charged with power? Because people go there and do abominable things that literally release darkness. And the height of abomination is to shed Innocent blood. This is why they use in a, they use children because the 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 the, the increase of darkness um, gives these evil spirits power in that place where darkness has been released. That's why certain places you go is just more power for demonic. Don't be going there. Are you there? And so now, instead of it being a witch's coven or a city that's evil. Satan, through the media and music and movies, is literally causing men to produce enough evil that the Bible says the world will be covered in darkness. Once the world is covered in darkness, there will be enough power for the man of sin to be revealed. Is this too much? So this is a numbers game. It's like percentages. This is a percentage game. What has stopped the enemy from doing this in Rome's day or Nimrod's day or Egypt's day was there was always a righteous seed that would under, that understood that we don't get things accomplished by physical war. Physical war are Satan's people feeding him blood, death, and chaos. Is that too much to understand? That's why there has never been a day where there was no war. Because those that are the elite, that are in cahoots or that have the bloodlines, they actually use their power and influence to create death, murder, and chaos because that's what feeds these fallen angels. You don't believe me? The Bible says in Genesis 6, that after these angels, uh, the people begin to feed the angels, and then the angels begin to get a taste for human flesh. That's where cannibalism comes from. Talk to me. How can I get y'all to see better what I'm saying? I'm going to read a scripture. I'm trying to help. Now, so, the church is in a state of civil war. The church is about to split. It's going to split. And that falling away is going to even give the kingdom of darkness more power. Because even a weak church can still come in agreement and pray. 
That was what my point was. What has stopped the enemy from doing what he's been trying to do? It's the church. For all of y'all who think God is against the church, no, it's the church. The church is the one that has the keys of the kingdom. That when they begin to speak, they don't have to be physically in the other realm. We have been given a license to affect that realm standing here. Talk to me. And when we begin to come on one accord and speak the will of the Most High, it, it challenges the powers of hell. Matter of fact, it frustrates. The Bible says our prayers go up as smoke. The smoke clears the heavenlies where these demons, spiritual wickedness in high places are. Oh, y'all don't. Y'all don't want what I'm saying. I know it's hard to get this. What is, okay, what, what, what is the smoke? It's, it's, it's electrical interference. If Satan is teaching man technology, that means technology he had before. It's too much. It's too much. It's too deep. It's too deep. See, we see because we have been dumbed down to think evolution, we're evolving from dumb to smart. We don't realize that all these other cultures, which was called occult, they know that knowledge now, which is no now they've been in other planets now. This ain't nothing new to them. You think we're you now. How do we go to Mars and we ain't been went back to the moon? Oh Lord, I'm full of this other message, y'all. Let me let me I'm full of this other message. Come on, talk to me. I'll, I'll, I have to teach this with, with my PowerPoint because I got pictures of Mars and stuff that's home Mars. Anyway, now, just too much. So what's happening is, is, say, agreement. Yes. Satan is after your agreement. Yes. Come on, say my agreement. my agreement. Your agreement is just like a street light, stop light. He's trying to change your reds to greens. Because just like that street light will allow you to go further down this street once it turns green. Agreement is trying to get God's people in agreement. Talk to me. Which gives him more power to take more ground. Once enough of God's true people are in agreement with him, and you see it happening every day. That's why now the church can't make up his mind who's gay, who ain't gay, who's right, who ain't right. That's that falling away. They get in agreement. Half the church in agreement with racism. Didn't Trump show us that? But once this agreement happens, there'll be critical mass. Critical mass means this is the power that Satan, listen, can take to the most high and say, yo people are calling me now. This is why Balaam knew I can't curse them right now because right now they are in agreement with the most high and as long as they're in agreement with the most high the heads of protection will stay around them matter of fact if I try to curse them and the heads is around them that curse will come back to me so what we must do look at this simple warfare same thing saying those simple warfare what we must do is get them to fall in love with sin by appealing to the drives of the body the same drive that Adam had, that, we, that Adam had to get kicked out because he was so lustful after he ate the fruit that the most I had to cover him because he wouldn't have got nothing else done because all he could see was the woman. So let's play on the drive. There are some women down there, Balak. You get them to go down into these media nights, they'll curse themselves. Once they curse themselves, the most high who is holy who is righteous, yes. who hates sin. Amen. They will become detestable. Remember in Noah's day when the Bible says that God said, I wish I never made him. Repent he ever made man. Why? 
because of the, the, the unrighteousness. He looked down and saw, I can really go deeper than what they were really doing. But he looked down and saw the violence, the wickedness, the sacrificing and all they was doing. And he didn't want them no more. Are you there? He done it again. Moses went up on the mountain, come down with the, with the law. They down there naked, dancing around his enemy. Dancing around his enemy. That same enemy, Baal or Molech, is the same God they worshiping now. The mo they came down and saw them dancing naked. Naked. See, that's part of Satan's. That's why I, 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 I'm taking your clothes off. It's a spirit. Naked. Around this calf. The most high got mad at him and said, I'm going to kill all of them. But the intercessor Moses said, no, sir. Amen. And he said, Moses, I start a nation with you. So that's all right. No, I don't want it. Moses is a great man. He's a great man. Because had he been even like me, <laughs> I would have said a, 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 a nation called Stephen? That sounds right. That's, that's right. Are you there? But Moses cared about the reputation of the Most High more. He said, what I've done, what's Egypt going to say? These people who you revealed your power and showed you a, was a benevolent God only to get your people out in the wilderness and kill them? Oh, you're going to make your enemies more powerful in their mocking of you. Oh, ain't that a great man? I care about your reputation. You can't even find people like that nowadays. I care more about your reputation than I won't even let you do something stupid. That's what leaders are looking for. Look at this. Okay, now, Lord. Thank you, baby. Now, this is having these little white pieces all over the place. All right, now, are y'all there? So, now, 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 what I'm really trying to talk about is say, my immaturity, my immaturity. Produces, produces Satan atmosphere. Satan atmosphere. Thank you, bro. Yes. Say my immaturity. my immaturity. This is the reason why you have to be knowledgeable. Say knowledgeable. knowledgeable. Did you know the more knowledge you have of God, the greater grace you're growing in? Meaning he gives you more grace based on your knowledge of him. The Bible says you can add to your faith. You can even add to grace by the knowledge you have of God. Now, what I want to let, let me show you something. Go to Galatians. Y'all, Galatians 2. Say, 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 Lord, grow me up. I don't want to be a producer of darkness. Verse, uh, verse 20. How am I going to grow up? I am crucified with Christ. This is the reason why Satan hates repentance. He hates humility. Humility breaks his power immediately. That's why it's hard to deliver folks that's prideful. Why do you think before Naaman, the leper, got delivered, Elijah told him, go down and dip in the dirty water. He was too proud. But he had to go. God put his miracle, his breakthrough, his deliverance in a place of total humility. That's why some of you can't get a breakthrough. You're too prideful. He keeps telling you to do things that's going to cause people to see you ain't all that. That's what he's been trying to get them to see anyway. Are you there? No matter how God-like you are, the Most High will show a fatal flaw in you. It's very important that men see your weakness. That's why Paul said I must glory in my weakness. Because if I ever make you think this stuff's coming from me, 
then I'm going to be in competition with the one that sent me. And if I'm, in, if I'm competing with him, he'll remove his grace from me. And without his grace, the enemies he's been keeping off of me. Oh, y'all ain't ready for that. That's why, how dare you be prideful? The enemies, you don't even know the enemies he's keeping off of you. That's people with pictures of you, videos, stuff of you. They ready to put on the internet and stuff. And he covered you. How dare you now come to the house of God and get mad because the praise is too long. If you knew what he was stopping, you give him glory like you lost your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's only by his grace that any of us have made it. Any of us. It ain't no knowledge. If it was about knowledge, then you'd have never got saved. Because he said, but you didn't even know me. I came looking for you. You didn't even know God. As a matter of fact, the first time you heard God, you didn't even know it was God. You were just as ignorant as Samuel. When the, when the Most High called him, he jumped up and ran to Eli. Many of you, when the Most High was calling you, you start running to weed and running to drinks and liquor and girls. You didn't know what that voice was. But him and his grace, through love and kindness, and tender mercies. That's why I get a little leery of people who, who you got to make praise. Get a little leery. And they up in church looking at you like this. I get, I get, I get, I get fearful for them. Because I know you either don't know him or you're about to go through something that's going to make you do it. And oh Lord, you really don't want to have to go through nothing that's going to make you know it. It's better to fall on the rock. The most high hates a proud look. Proud look says I've delivered myself. Lord, let me get back to that. Say I am crucified. This is how I stop producing darkness on my job. It ain't the boss, it's you. Put darkness all in the car, darkness in the bedroom, darkness in the house. You're blaming everybody else. It's you. But you have never learned that your true posture is to be crucified. Your true posture is to be looking down on everybody and everything that's ever done anything to you and say, forgive them. Oh, that's graduation. With yeah, even the one that molested you, the one that broke your heart, forgive them. Then the most has said, oh, they becoming like me. Let me get some stuff from the other side, because now I can trust them now. They not going to take this power and go get revenge. Because you know, in the state we be in, if we was to have the power, half the people you know would be dead. If you just had the power to just, all them would be dead. Every last one would be dead. I mean, you can't get in trouble. Even now, as saved as you are, and you knew that you could just will it, we be dead. God's power and see his power his power is so tied to his nature that he must hollow out a vessel hollowing out a vessel is emptying a vessel of all of you because if he trusts you let me go Come on, say I'm crucified, I'm crucified. With, Christ. with Christ. Nevertheless, 
always when you see nevertheless, pay attention. Come on, say nevertheless. Nevertheless. I still live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. This is supposed to be what you say to people. This is supposed to be your posture in life. I'm not living, but it's the Christ that live in me. Even when people want to praise you, thank you, but it's not really not me. The real me is as selfish as the day is long. And if I start living out of me, you might get cussed out. Because that's what I would do. So anything good that you got from It didn't come from me. But it's the Christ that liveth in me. This is the problem now. A lot of, a lot of saints can't even say that the Christ is living in them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, go to Luke. Let's go book of Luke. I'm going to stop this darkness in my life. Amen. Being a producer, I don't want Satan to be comfortable around me. Amen. You know, I don't want him to know I can count on Dayton for a good old cuss word right and then when I, when I need it. I don't want him to know that about me. I don't want him to know I can, I can count on them to gossip. I can keep. I can, I can. I can release darkness wherever I go in them. Do y'all see? That's what. Did you see? See an uncrucified, an uncrucified life will produce darkness wherever it goes. Are you there? Amen. This is the reason why I'll get there. Luke twenty-two. Now jump down. Luke nine. Luke nine. Then we'll go back. Luke nine. 23. Come on, say, Lord, Lord force, me force me to grow up. To grow up. Growing up is not age. Amen. Growth in the kingdom of God is how much character of Christ you develop. Amen. That's what growth is. How much character of Christ I develop. That's why the ultimate growth Christ said, greater love had no man than to lay down his life. Greatest love, greatest growth you can have. That's the reason why your graduation will always be, can you forgive somebody that was dead wrong? Or do you need your rights? Come on. Do you need a judge and need your rights? Or can you see, some of y'all problem is, most of the stuff that you suffered, you suffer because you're so deceived. But when you really start living uh, in righteousness, you start getting persecuted for doing nothing at all. That's why even 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 the, the even Peter, I mean even Stephen in the book of Acts had to say the same thing: forgive them. They ain't know they don't know what they do. That's suffering for righteous sake. This is where he's trying to get us all to. Are y'all there? Why is this important? Come on, oh Lord, why is this important? Because you're going to have to leave this earth, not, you're going to have to leave this body. And you have to have the correct posture to die. You better have the correct spirit when you die. Because we all, he's, not, he's training me to be able to let, lay down this body in the right spirit. Forgive them, Father. See, they know not what they do. So in this life, he gives me plenty of opportunity to be offended, to be bitter, to, be, to, to walk in unforgiveness, to get revenge, to be angry. 
And every time I overcome that, he said, there's a crown. There's a reward. He ain't rewarding you for the little stuff you think. He's rewarding you for the time you should have went off. You should have let him have it. But you said, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. Now you have rewards in heaven. If you get your rights on earth, you will have none in the next life. That's why you have to deny your rights here. Is this too much? Let me go here. Come on, just see, 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 you know what I'm talking about? Preach on the Hebrew Israelite. Preach on about who we are. Preach on, you see, preach, preach, that's whatever I want. Preach on the flat earth, which is a lie. I said it. Preach on, you know, preach on uh, uh, the Mandela effect. Preach on this new deep teeth. Preach on it. Preach on, uh, pre uh, preach on where, where the, uh, 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 what the planets really are. See, pre preach on where the, the brotherhood of society is. Preach, preach on, preach on, preach, preach. They never asked me. Preach on my wicked way. Preach on how far I'm away from God. Preach on how much sin I'm allowing. Preach on how much darkness is in me. Preach on the wickedness of my heart. They never want that word. I got 400 some videos on YouTube. The ones that got 100,000 hits. 100,000 hits and above. It's all messages about who we are. Hebrew Israelites and witchcraft. Meaning witches, what other people are doing to me. They don't think they, they could be the witch. <laughs> but I got messages on her. I got messages on her that are called faith erosion. Yeah. Yeah. Real low hits on these messages. It's almost as if people to see the title, oh, that ain't going to be nothing. This is going to deal with me, so let's move on. They don't want those messages. Those are low, the low, lowest views is on them. Views are high when it deals with stuff that's not dealing with me. But what you don't realize is no matter how vast our father is, how big his universe is, how many galaxies and planets he has created, he still understands the greatest thing in his heart is you. So even though he could tell you what they did on Mars and how the planet Rahab blew up that is now the Saturn, there's the belt of the Saturn, where Satan's planet was called Rahab. See, see, you want to know that right now? Ooh, go deep in. No! You! The Most High will break in all that science and technology and say, you better love your mother. Because he's a personal God. The only thing going to get you to meet him is to personally seek him now. Not to know him like your mama or like your nation. Not to know him like black folk, African folk, or Jewish folk, but to know him yourself. So he cares about the little things that I think ain't nothing to a God as big as he is. Ain't that awesome? That, that messed me up when I thought about this God is upholding all things through the word of his power. The Bible says he hung the earth, he hung the world out on nothing. Just slung it out and said, be, and keep holding it. This God that got all the planets, this, this God that's, that's got all power in his hand, and he's worried about how I treat my brother, how I treat my mother. He's worried about how I treat my wife. He's worried about the little insignificant thing that happened to me when I was a child. That God is calling me daily saying, did you get over that little thing? Why are you so worried about me? Even the angels came and said, what is man? That you are mindful of them. Why are you so focused on this little weak, frail thing? Amen. Because he's committed 
You don't know what it is to be a son or a daughter. To be in the family of God. Can I go on? I, I know, I know, I had to leave y'all hanging. I got to go. Luke chapter 9, y'all there? Look at verse 23. Come on, say no more darkness in my life. Come on, say nevertheless is my new word. Did you know that's how that's when you grow? When you do what you didn't want to do anyway. Amen. When you decide I don't want to do it, but who said wanting to do got anything to do with doing something? Amen. You ain't got to want to do it. Amen. All the time I talk to my sons and I look at them, I say, I know what, uh, in my mind I say, I know they don't want to go out there. And but that ain't got nothing to do with it. Amen. Wanting to do ain't got nothing to do with doing it. You mess up your kids when you let them do what they want to do. Yeah. I don't want to eat that. What want to do got to do with you being hungry. You know what? You're not hungry enough. You're not hungry enough. I know how to put this in saran wrap. Put it back in the refrigerator. What you want to do today. Luke 9, 23. And he said to them, all, oh, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Come on, say himself. And take up his cross daily and follow me. Greatest scripture. One of the greatest scriptures that delivered me because it made me realize that I was going to have to do something about my life. That it wasn't going to be no automatic walk in the park, he just throw grace on me. No, sir. He said I had to do something and that was to deny me. I had to take and go against the urges, lust, and drives of this flesh and decide that his will was better than what I wanted. Have you decided that yet? Have you decided that his will is better than what you want? Or are you trying to manipulate God to give you what you want over his will? I said his will is better than what you want. And if you were to listen to his will, you would have less knots and more money. Because when you do something outside of his will, you got to pay for it. It costs you. Say growth comes through denial. Growth comes through self-denial. That's how you grow. You know, we're on our 80-day fast. Yes, I said 80 days. No, y'all wasn't here Wednesday night. Yes, 80 days. No, 80. It's 80 now. It's 80. Yeah, I looked at the calendar. I decided we should be longer. This is the... This is the witching season. You do know September, October, November, this is all witch months when they do their highest rituals. So I said, we better not stop before October. I'm not going to stop before Halloween. They highest, they satanic Christmas day. We got to go on through. So the 80 day is the 11th, November. Wonder what the next day would be. <laughs> <laughs> that just fell out just right 80 days <laughs> but why are we doing that because this is a breaking season to break your flesh so you don't do everything you want to do learn to deny yourself hallelujah <laughs> And he said, oh, let him deny himself, say deny himself, deny himself. and take up his cross. Oh, look what time it is. And take up his cross. Say my cross. my cross. Now I want to mature you real quick. I want you to grow quick. Because I must reveal to you what your cross is.
your cross, if you have a cross and you're not carrying it, then your cross is your crutch. Instead of you being nailed to it, you hold it like a crutch. Your crutch is what you use for sympathy. When you get in people, when people get in your life, you start throwing up your crutch. And that's what lets me know it's not your, that is really your cross. The cross are things that we cannot change. It's ordained suffering. Christ was trying to tell Peter, no, sir, I got a date with ordained suffering. Peter said, no, sir. He tried to rebuke Christ. Christ said, get behind me, Satan. You're trying to keep me from my ordained suffering. The glory that I had before, I'll get again if I despise the shame of the ordained suffering. So really what Peter was doing was being selfish, trying to keep Christ to himself. And Christ said, if I go to the cross, I deliver the world. What's better? So I'll have to despise the fact of what they're going to do to me and what I got to go through to be who I'm called to be. You will never be who you called to be using the cross as a crutch. Did y'all hear what I said? So what is your cross? Your cross is what you do, what you use for sympathy. Meaning when people get in, oh, I was molested. Oh, I didn't have no mama. Didn't have no father. It's all right to tell people that, but when your motive is to pour sympathy. When what you should be getting glory for is not the defeat, but for the victory. The victory is I despise the shame of this and went on through it anyway. And now I'm better and not bitter. I have a deliverance power now that I didn't have before. So now when I see, this is the reason why this opiate heroin thing ain't going to get fixed because they made it they crutch. They won't lock them up. They won't shame them. They made it they crutch. And because it's a crutch, they'll never understand that if this, if I change the crutch to the cross, I'll crucify what do you mean? I'll crucify my right to be on it. But you, society, has given me a right by calling it a disease. Meaning this is something that just happened to me and I have no control over. But when I use it as, a, as the cross, I'll nail it. I'll nail it. Talk to me. See, anything that you won't carry becomes your crutch. And that's what runs people away from you. Every time I get in a relationship, somebody always hurt me. They hurt me every time. I don't know why, I don't know why these people like you. My ex-husband did it. My ex-wife did it. And people here, this person is so, so, see what that interprets to me is, when I hear you using your cross as your crutch, that lets me know you're going to try to get me to carry your cross. So then you're going to be taking out on me what you refuse to carry. And you're going to be forcing me into your uh, damaged vacuum of a life to suck the life out of me. Try to support you as you refuse to be delivered or refuse to be healed. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm talking about. If you didn't have the power to carry it, Christ would have never gave it to you. I said, you got the power to get up. This is what I like about Christ. And I know many of y'all wouldn't like Christ. That Christ was not sympathetic in that way. Only to those who couldn't do for himself. But when he walked up on the man at the pool of Bethesda. What are you doing? I ain't got no man. Every time I don't got something, they put me in that. Man, get up. Some of y'all need to get good 
get up. Don't nobody want to hear it no more. You done talk to people to get up out of that stuff. You could be happy if you get on up. You ain't the only one been divorced. You ain't the only one been molested. You ain't the only one been abandoned. You ain't the only one been hurt. You ain't the only one that had no father. You ain't the only one that had no mother. You ain't the only one been sick. Get on up out of that stuff. We all got a cross to burn. Meaning when you a follower of Christ, you have no rights. To be sick. Amen. You have no right to use what has happened to you as an excuse for not making it. Amen. If your destiny was predicated on you being good and feeling good all the time, you'd have never gave you suffering. Amen. Paul said when he got the revelation that I got to know him, the power of his resurrection. And in the fellowship of his suffering, he trusted me to suffer before the foundations of the world. He says, Steve will do it. The Bible says, when Christ was getting crucified, in Isaiah, the Bible says, it pleased God to bruise him because he knew what he put in him, that he ain't going to betray me because of the suffering. So the Bible says, before I born into your mother's belly, I knew you. You asked to be here, y'all got. You asked to come to get the greater reward. The greater reward was to have this flesh and live in weak flesh and still hold on to God. That's why the Bible says, you shall judge angels. Because they got all that power and they can behold the presence of God. They better serve him, but you don't even see him. Yet you believe. He trusted you to suffer. That's why your life was the way it was. Trusted you. He knew I didn't need it to make it. Didn't need a daddy to make it. I wish I had it, but I didn't need it. But I'll make it anyway. If you're not having a mother, would have affected your destiny? He gave you a mother. He gave you what you needed to make it. His will is more important than your pain. His will is more important than your suffering. That's why David said it was good that I had been afflicted. I'm glad I went through what I went through. I wouldn't have knew God on the level that I know him on. I wouldn't love as deep as I love. I wouldn't have overcame what I overcame. The wisdom I had is based on what I didn't get. You don't seek out what you got. You seek out what you don't got. What made me a good father was that I didn't have a good father. I saw that what I didn't have. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Maturity is learning to accept the suffering in your life. Realizing you'll never grow if it was all good. He trusted you. That's why number one thing God hates complaining. He hates complaining. When we, when we begin to complain we begin, to, we begin to call into question the ability of the Most High. He knew what he did when he brought you here. He understood what you needed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I thank him now. Hallelujah. I was a great preacher for a long time. I was great because I had the knowledge. I was good, let's say it like that. I was good because I had knowledge of the Bible. But I became great when the suffering 
came in my life and made me not glory in the knowledge, but I began to glory in the application. Because no longer was it good just to impress you by what I knew. I had to take what I knew and apply it like ointment to my own life. Then my preaching became great. If you ever be anything, it'll be because you embraced your cross. You stop crying about what you didn't get, what you don't got. Your eyes ain't this color, your weight ain't this big, your hair ain't this long. That's foolishness. You talking about external things that have nothing to do with your destiny. Anything that would have hindered you from your destiny, he would have gave it to you. But the Bible said he would never put more on you than you can bear. So you got what you need to make it right now. Come on, lift your hands. Father, we thank you for the cross in our life. The suffering that caused us to become fortified. We could have quit a long time ago, but it was the little crosses we was bearing. We thank you for the for, 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 we thank you for the suffering that we pray that it may go away, but you left us in it long enough to develop fruit because you knew the real trial of our life is bigger than this. Although I fought the lion and the bear, Goliath is what you prepared me for. So thank you for the test and the trial I went through. Thank you that I didn't give up. That if I wasn't disciplined enough, AIDS would have took me from my destiny. If I didn't get disciplined enough, I'd have backslid. If I didn't get disciplined enough, I'd have walked away from you. But it was a little test and a trial that fortified me to stand with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even though I know you didn't, you don't do sickness, but I thank you for it. I wouldn't have knew you on that level. I wouldn't have understand the God that's sticking closer than a brother. I wouldn't have had the faith I got now. I probably would have died because I wouldn't have had no, I wouldn't have had no ability to withstand anything if it wasn't for that. Hallelujah. I thank you for the rejection. I'm glad they didn't accept me. I'm glad they walked away from me. I'm glad they abandoned me. Because I wouldn't. Hallelujah. 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 That's what ran me to you. If they would have accepted me, I would have never sought you. You said if my mother and father forsake me, you would take me up. Hallelujah. 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 I don't have time to do a altar call today, but I'm going to pray. Pray for you right where you're at. Because today you should have a heart of gratitude. Hallelujah. Today your heart should be grateful. You might not, your money might not have changed. What you're going through might not have changed. But what should have changed was your perspective. The way you see it now. That you was blessed to struggle. You was blessed to wander. You was blessed. Because in the midst of it, thou art with me. Come on. I never wanted to go through the valley of the shadow, but if I wouldn't have went through the valley, I wouldn't have knew that thou art with me. I wouldn't have felt that rod or, or that staff comforting me. I wouldn't have understood there was a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. But it took the valley of the shadow of death for me to understand your goodness. 
Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you that you loved us enough to cause us to have great rewards. We thank you for every trial. We repent for complaining. Father, I repent for complaining. I repent for it because I, I, many times I ask you to pull me out. But you knew what was best for me. Though my weary eyes could not see. You're better than me than this old world could ever be. So I won't complain. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your power. You're rearranging hearts and destinies right now. Come on, we receive what you're doing right now. We receive it, God. Whatever you got to do, whoever you got to move, whoever you got to use, I accept your will for my life right now. I accept your will for my life right now. For my ladder shall be better, shall be greater than my past. Come on, it's not over for me. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Thank you for the fresh work that you have began in me today. And because you started it, you will finish it. Come on, you will finish it. Come on, in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, give the Lord the best praise you got. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, turn and give somebody a hug. Hallelujah. Amen. After that, you can be seated. Quickly, we're going to take up our offering. Quickly, ushers, come quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me the envelope, raise your hand. We will serve you. That's all right. Don't forget September the 10th. Um, we're going to be having our 16th annual pastoral anniversary um, at Noise Event Center, a place. What is it? Oh, okay. Thank you, brother. Yeah, it's in our bulletin. At Noah's event, or oh, it's in our bulletin. At Noah's event, place, it's going to be a black tie event, amen. So please dress in your best. If you can't afford a black tie, just come, amen. All of our partners, if you're watching, you are invited to come and celebrate, amen, this 16 years of what God has done, amen, in this ministry, what he's done in my life, through my life, amen. Uh, also, we are currently on an 80-day fast. I know it says 60, but we're on an 80-day fast. Uh, this fast is from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., amen, 6 p.m., 6 in the evening to 6 in the morning, amen. It's a half a day fast, 12-hour fast, but it's a good fast. How many of y'all felt it? It's a good fast, amen. It's a real good fast. Amen. We're going to be on it for a while. Amen. This is the season where churches should be fasting and praying. Going into the fall months. Fall months are the witching months. I know you don't know that, but I'm telling you, this is when they do their greatest work. That's why everything bad happened in September. September 11, Oklahoma City bombing. Most of the stuff bad happens in September. So Satan does his greatest work. Amen. So we plan, we praying. Amen. We're going to be spiritually sharp and aware. Man, during this time. 